Hello and welcome back to another episode of Gaming the System, the podcast where three intersectional feminists examine gaming and games through a feminist lens. I'm your host for today, I'm Jem, and I'm here with my friends Alex and Matt. So before we get started, if you want to support us, you can subscribe to our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash gaming the system for some exclusive content, or you can send us a one-off donation via PayPal to our email address, wearegamingthesystem at gmail.com. Um, Alex, you mentioned about um, the convicted paedophile that we heard so little about despite yeah. all of this. And I know, that, Matt, you wanted to talk about this. Um, I just um, just to give a bit of background, um, it, he is uh, uh, the Netherlands volley, uh, beach volleyball team, um, Stephen van der Veld, and he was jailed in 2016 for four years. Um, after he flew to the UK uh, to meet up with a 12-year-old um, girl he'd um, been chatting with on Facebook when he was 19. Um, and so he was um, convicted of, of statutory rape. Um, uh, there, there's no there's no sort of, it, it wasn't violent rape. And I think that's what's really interesting about the commentary on this is that there's sort of, that there's this attitude that therefore that makes it not as bad. Um, and I think that, you know, all three of us probably feel that that's clearly not the case. But he, he came back and, and competed. He's done his time and now he's competing. And I suppose it's what do we what do we feel about that, and and also how do we feel about this sort of double standards that the world gets up in arms about um, a woman with raised testosterone levels, but um, doesn't seem to care about this convicted paedophile competing in one of the most sexualized um, games within the Olympics. I think you, you could definitely argue. Over to you, Matt. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, 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 there's a podcast called Crime in Sports that I, I love, and they did an episode on him a while back, so I went and listened back to some, to that. And there was a horrifying thing which I thought was him. That I had to go back and double check. So I want to the 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 conversation about whether violent rape and non-violent rape that violent rape is worse. I think it's the absolute opposite because. Mm-hmm. It's so much worse to to groom, especially mm. a child, because you can talk a child into something, and then a child children aren't allowed to legally consent, but they can still think that they want it because they've been talked into it, and that can fuck someone up for their entire life, and as it clearly had an impact with this. So people say, so I want to ignore everything about him being an Olympian. I don't care about his his how good he is, about what he does or how he did another thing. Because this is the conversation that must have been had, because this is all from court documents. He he pleaded guilty to all of this. So this is what everyone who's supporting him in the Dutch in the Dutch um, Volleyball Association, this is what they know. And the the most horrifying thing I've ever heard um that is that this should be the only thing that is mentioned every single time so he flew (laughs) she told her family that she was staying at a friend's house that night he flew over and he flew over she tried to book a hotel room but of course she can't because she's 12 so that means he told her oh yeah book a hotel room and i'll be over there and then they got there, so they're, they're, they get there, and there are no rooms at any of the hotels. And so, where do you think they went next? Where do where do you take your where do you take your groomed child to next? You're on mute, Jim. The park. The park, yes, bingo. She took them. Took she <clears throat> took her to a lake. 
took her to a nearby lake. This is in Milton Keynes, by the way. Um, and it's not, we're not like in Australia, we're not in Italy, where a lakeside <laughs> is a beautiful, sunny paradise. It's a cold... I know Milton Keynes well. Middle yeah. Keaton, Milton Keynes Lake. And he gave her Baileys. He gave her alcohol. And that's when the first act occurred. Um, and then the next, the next part is the worst bit. So no... There are no... She says she's staying at a friend's house, so she can't go home. There are no hotel uh, rooms available. Where do you spend the night? Outside, I guess. It's worse than that. They went to a Premier Inn, and they slept under cardboard boxes in the stairwell. That's the most horrifying thing I've ever heard, and I had to double check that that was this man because that the 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 sickness in the head of someone who does these steps is so dangerous, and proving that he's done this, and then uh, the next day uh, they her parents are out, so they went back to her house, and the third act occurred, and they did it in her sister's bed which is another unbelievably sick twist on it. And then uh, it just gets worse and worse. And then the next day he said, oh yeah, you better go and get the morning after pill. And then he flew off back to the, the Netherlands. And obviously when a 12 year old <clears throat> goes into a family planning clinic and asks for the morning after pill, they immediately called the police. Yeah. And then that's how it, ha- that's how mm. it came out. If if he hadn't said to her, go to the family planning clinic, the fact that he's able to tell her to do these things and she does them without question mm. shows how horrifyingly dangerous he is. Um, and I just, I, I can't believe that, though, that that isn't the only thing that has been mentioned every single time his name has been mentioned. Mm. Well, I didn't because... know any of, well, I didn't know much of that, so, yeah, that's horrifying but um and also i should add i don't think he actually served all of his sentence he's only served part of it i think it was four years and he's only done one i remember yeah, in our he... previous episode we chatted about so, that. The... so he's not even finished his whole sentence it was so he did this in in august 2014 and he was convicted he pled guilty in 2016 um so two years of two years of being free out about um and in the uk the maximum sentence for this crime is 19 years which is not enough in the fucking slightest um and it's not he would say oh i made a mistake i was young and made a mistake yeah that is a series of actions which is you have to be a certain kind of person to be able to go through that that and that you don't and clearly from everything that he's said since, he, has, he hasn't changed in the slightest. He doesn't get it in the slightest. He was, um, I mean, she was 12 and he was 19. There is no, there is no setting where that's just like, I mean, if, you know, in, in some scenarios that there, there is statutory rape where there is like months between them. And, you know, that you can maybe say like, okay, they were just idiots. But in this scenario, there, there just is no... Um, no excuse. Either. There's no justification. There's nothing you can. You, the, even in the best, with the best will, you can't justify it. And for him to come over and and not even have organised a hotel and not even have, you know, I mean, he hasn't even. He's done nothing for this. This is just. It just is not. There is no justification for it. Uh, there is. Yeah. It's. Horrendous. And and, the, and in the UK and the Netherlands have a have an extradition agreement where um, uh, if it, any they have to be prison, imprisoned in uh, they can be sentenced in the UK but they have to be sentenced under Dutch guidelines and then they can mm. serve there to and I don't know if you've seen Dutch prisons they are lovely places they are lovely humane places which are, they they do 
prison the way they should be done. Mm. Um, but that means that he should be there for a very, very, very long time. Mm. And the maximum that you could get sentenced for rape in the Netherlands is 12 years, which again is not enough. No. It's not enough. And especially when he got, so he pled guilty to three counts of rape against a child. Now, I don't know if anyone was accused of that and you didn't do it. You would fight to the ends of the fucking mm. earth. You mm. would never, ever, ever admit mm. to even one of those things. And they gave him four years for each one of the counts, but then served them concurrently. So he was sentenced to four years. And that, that, is, that is insane. So if he'd only done one, if he'd done one count, then he'd have gotten four years and done four years. So how, what is the... What's the... How do you decide that? So at every point, institutions are coming up behind him and saying, oh, don't worry, it'll be fine. Yeah. And... And, yeah, yeah, so, it's, so he didn't serve any time for it, but hardly any time for it. Um, and one of the signs, one of the, the reasons why I think that grooming a child is infinitely worse than just grabbing them off the street is this child had to, she said she testified that she was in love with him mm. and that that's why she did all these things because that's what she thought being in love with. And yeah. she's had some horrifying mental health struggles going on from then because she feels guilty yeah for, for this yeah. for him getting responsibilities for it yeah yeah and that's the thing there are real people and i just want to say that the general director are at neverbo who i'm just trying to see who that i'm not sure previously said of van der Verld, he was convicted at the time according to English law and he was he has served his sentence. From then on, we have been in constant contact with Stephen, who has now been fully integrated into the Dutch volleyball community. He is proving to be an extremely uh, sorry, an exemplary professional and human being, and there is no reason to doubt him since his return. We fully support him and his participation in Paris which he and somebody else have earned. So it's, there you it's, go. So another, the, the most prolific sexual predators, it's not just about grooming children, it's about grooming the adults who are, who are responsible for those children. Mm. Because someone who grabs a child off the street, they're not going to last very long. It's the no. ones that clearly, from the way that people speak about him who support him, you can just tell that they have... He has manipulated them perfectly yeah. to go, oh, yeah, he's completely reformed. Because he can just... And that's a terrible, 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 dangerous sign that yeah. he's clearly continuing the manipulating and that he's being very, very successful at it. Um, and the, uh, uh, as a, in terms of double standards... Hmm. The France, just like us and just like America, has a resurgence of um, anti-immigrant people, people oh. who hate anyone from another country coming to their country. When it's a person of colour desperately trying to get get there from a, a person of colour who's a Muslim trying to get to safety from their country, they want to... They want to drown them all in the channel rather than let them here. But when it's a mm. six foot four, handsome Scandinavian guy, it doesn't matter what they do, which goes to show it's just as with the, the boxing, it's not about equality and mm. safety and protecting people. It's about hating someone with less power than you and yeah. being mm. okay. Because... Mm. Because like with the the core takeaway I took from uh, the boxing thing is that it's a pos the positives drowned out and were able to drown out the uh, the negative side of it. Whereas in the past it would have been the other way around, and so yeah. uh, 
normally it would be the uh, anti-trans people kick up a fuss and then, oh, we've disqualified her, sorry, sorry, sorry. Whereas the IOC has actually stuck to its guns and said, we didn't trust the other, the Boxing Federation. Yeah. And one of the best quotes, which uh, summarises what we say, is that uh, there is not a scientifically solid system to identify men and women. Whereas every anti-trans person says, oh, you can tell from looking. Yeah. And you go, well, yeah. well, why is there so much furore about it? If you can just look at her and say, oh, yeah, that's a man. Yeah. And you go, well, yeah, it's bullshit, isn't it? Uh, and, yeah. But the, the, the sane people, the good people, seem to be making good decisions for the most part. Mm. Um, and... It, rather the guy the the pedophile is out of prison he's free and clear he is on the indefinite sexual predator list which is good mm. but that clearly mm. hasn't stopped him being another problem with sport is that it's not like any other career sport adult sport overlaps with children's sport mm. all the way so mm. that's a problem so he's and he clearly feels no remorse so he's free he feels no remorse but the only his no one has mentioned his name without saying, "Oh, he's a beautiful, isn't he?" And yeah. that's the sort of best we can hope for, really. And yeah. if you had any any, oh, this is my last point. If you had any any remorse whatsoever for what you put a child through, it's ten years ago. It's so it's the ten year anniversary of this. Can you imagine? You say, "Oh, I feel awful about it." Um, and if I go to the Olympics, the biggest show on earth, that child is going to see me. Mm. And all that's going to be talked about is what I did to her. And yeah. the amount of trauma that re-traumatizing her that is yeah. done by him going, oh, I should be able to do whatever I want. It's not fair. Mm. And yeah, so yeah. yeah yes. Hopefully, hopefully we won't hear about him again for another four years. So. No. And just to hopefully now as well, just saying about positives outweighing negatives. Hopefully that will continue <coughs> for the Paralympics, because I read just yesterday that there will be the first transgender woman competing in the Paralympics. <coughs> An Italian athlete. Um, I'm not sure which type of athletics it is, but um, I think they're very proud to be there and um, representing their country. They are visually impaired as well. Um, so I'll definitely keep an eye out for that and hopefully as you say the positives will outweigh what will inevitably be lots of negative uh, yeah. coverage uh, so we might have to come back to that topic as well and yeah. the, the thing like what I was saying, what I was saying about um, we want women to be safe I don't want women to be to be have to deal with violence in any form um, I and so that's my perspective on the world. And so I want trans people to be safe. I want women to be safe. And that's what I want to work the way towards. Anti-trans people say, we care about women's safety, but they, they don't. They just care about hating mm -hmm. trans people. Mm -hmm. And so so the, what, what the, um, the guy who I think he said he was, who said on an interview saying, we need to keep people safe. We need to keep it safe. People keep sport fair. Yeah, mm. Mm. Is that what you saying? You, you, it's all very well having inclusion, but sport needs to be fair. Yeah, so, so that could be him saying there is a place for everyone in sport, in competitive sport. Mm. It's not simple working out what mm. that is because it's much more similar to what the Paralympics is where there yeah. are there are uh, women who it's just like with the double standard of say Michael Phelps or Usain Bolt Michael Phelps doesn't produce lactic acid or something which is unfair and gives him mm. a massive advantage and so we start from the position of there is an answer where everyone gets an, an equal egalitarian shot and we want to find a way towards that hmm. and i feel like this hmm. olympics for the most part went in that direction went that way yeah um i'm very aware that we're 
very much over running, but I've got a couple of more things that I just want to cover if you're both okay for okay. that. Yeah. Um, so, firstly, I want to direct our listeners to an awesome organization called Hope hope not hate uh you can find them at hope not hate.org um and um they are excellent at, at sort of fact checking and providing information about things that are going on in the world around you and they've been following recent um uh racist riots and um the the unrest that we've been seeing over the past few weeks and providing uh, information on that and also uh, just looking at like what's actually going on and giving you a, a reasonable um, explanation of the situation. So if anyone's concerned, I would suggest visiting them. Um, but I also want to say that this was the first Olympics that we saw three black athletes sharing a podium. Um, and they were Rebecca um, Andrade of Brazil, who um, earned gold in the women's floor ex um, exercise final. Uh, Simone Biles um, receiving silver and Jordan Childs um, taking bronze. Um, so it it was really lovely to see them on the podium and um, Bios and Childs, um, lovely rhyming of their names, Bios and Childs, um, um, both from the United States, uh, like actually bowed down to um, Andrade. And that's so lovely. And it, I just think it's, it, that's just an example of sisterhood and, you know, recognizing the, um joy in being amongst other people that are also awesome at the thing that you love doing so i thought that was really nice um and the other thing i wanted to share that i also thought was a lovely moment is that um after i'm just reading this because this is from a news article but after a dominant um four zero win over the u.s uh men's soccer team the um, Mor uh, Morocco's, um, and I'm not going to pronounce this correctly, but Ashraf Hakimi, um, 25, consoled the American soccer player, Kevin Paredes, who was 21, um, and actually knelt down to comfort him and um who was crying he was crying because he'd lost and he went over he knelt down he comforted him then he lifted him up put his arm around his neck and walked down the soccer field with him the football field i might say um and um and i just think that's a really lovely example of men demonstrating that it doesn't always have to be toxic masculinity mm -hmm. it doesn't always have to be um that competitive thing again it's another example of people at the top of their game just enjoying being with other people at the top of their yeah. game so i think that's that was so nice that's a great spot um i missed that so sorry thanks for sharing it i completely missed yeah that. so it's nice to hear yeah yeah, no, they're nice little stories to come out that I think just get lost, don't they, in all of the other drama. Yeah. Um, so I definitely agree with both of you that this has been a, a, a very positive um, experience, really, overall. Um, so finally, I feel like we do need to actually talk about computer games. <laughs> <laughs> so we haven't done that at all in this whole episode. Sorry, my cat has arrived. Oh, <laughs> um, so, so yeah, so there was no Mario and um, Sonic 2024. Um, and um, there was only one game, which I had up here somewhere, uh, which was Olympics Go. Uh, Paris 2024 and that's actually just a mobile game yeah. so why 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 have then been no no bigger games for this year that's an interesting question I don't know the answer but it's disappointing because you know they were very popular um the Sonic and um 
Mario Olympics back in, obviously, I think, I can't remember when the first one was, but obviously London was super popular, particularly here, because um, it was a um, Nintendo uh, property, so with the Wii, it fitted kind of perfectly for families to kind of just compete against each other and have lots of fun. Um, but yeah, I think I was reading the developer was just saying they, they uh, I don't know if they ran out of funding or... They just felt like they wanted to go in another direction because the funding pot was a bit smaller. Um, to be fair, mobile gaming is a pretty large market, but uh, it's just not quite the same, is it, you know, compared no. to PC and console gaming. Um, but yeah, maybe there's just not an appetite for, for an Olympic sporting game this year. Who knows? I'm sure of the answer there. Mm. Do you have any thoughts on that, Matt? Yeah, I think it is a... As the years go on and social media and non-establishment forms of like media and communication come up, that <laughs> like, perfectly framed your cat, Gem. <laughs> <laughs> um, that they must have... They must have just gone out. Oh, it's not really worth us doing it mm. anymore because they they don't need it. It's it's a it was a, a labor of the, the Olympics is a labor of love for mm -hmm. the hosts. The it, it it costs untold amounts of money to host the Olympics, um, and there's this, this element of it. As it it's about producing a cool thing, not about profiting from it and i think that um if they wanted to they could have thrown something together but they just i don't think they, they need to and i think probably what would make more sense is for something like Fortnite to uh, do something yeah. with the mm. olympics in mm. it just feels like there 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 is so 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 much content of every kind of media to that anyone can have a, a touch of a button now. The the if we like fifteen years ago, there was exponentially fewer like games, mm, and cute. so someone might go, "Oh, an Olympics game! I'll have that. I'll give that a go." And, you know, I've got Baldur's Gate three to play again. Yeah, and yeah. I've got all these other things and it's not going to be good enough because it's, it's either because they know that it's going to be free yeah if they, if, and they go so then we're not going to make any money from it no. and they just uh, they know that it's probably not going to be good enough for, if it's free for people to for it to matter to people especially mm. yeah so they've just gone eh. yeah no i agree i mean i wonder if it's got if it might have to do with the cost of licensing because oh, my yes. um little evermerge game definitely did an olympics um themed like side game um they do these little islands that you do and they last for a, a few days and my uh, this particular island had lots of gnomes <laughs> becoming doing different things like you know archery and swimming oh. and um and and shot put and stuff so you know they had a they they had definitely had a an olympic theme yeah. but they didn't, didn't refer to it as as the olympics which made me wonder if it's just that that the the cost of it the the, excuse me, it cost of the licensing yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, so I think that might be the the issue that maybe it's just it's just become uh you know too much money for too little gain for people. So yeah. Right, well, I think that's enough. I think we're all olympic out and um I think we do have to come back and do um something similar on the Paralympics for sure. because I think that's important when we're talking about equality actually um so we will do that and um yeah we'll be back on your computer screens and your phone screens very soon 
So thank you both for your time today. And uh, thank you for all listening to us. And um, yeah, we'd really love to hear your thoughts on all of the things that we've talked about today. Um, I hope you enjoyed our chat. Thank you. Bye. Bye.